Section 8.4, Properties of Rhombuses, Rectangles, and Squares. So first, recall a parallelogram, which is what we've been talking about so far, is a quadrilateral with opposite sides congruent. We also know that this means that opposite sides are, I'm sorry, opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. This also means that opposite sides are congruent, that opposite angles are congruent, that consecutive angles are supplementary, and that diagonals bisect each other. If you do not readily know this material, please go back and rewatch your videos for 8.2 and 8.3. All right, what we're going to talk about today are rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, which are three types of parallelograms. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So we get a parallelogram where opposite sides are parallel, but all four sides are congruent. It's an equilateral parallelogram. A rectangle is also a parallelogram but it is with four right angles. A rectangle is an equiangular parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel, and then we get four right angles. A square is both a rhombus and a rectangle. A square is a parallelogram with four right angles and four congruent sides. Which gives us parallelogram, four right angles, four congruent sides. Those are your basic definitions. Before you move on, make sure that you know them. Real quick, we'll look at a hierarchy of quadrilaterals. This red circle represents all parallelograms. Within parallelograms, we have rhombuses, which are parallelograms with four equal sides, or four congruent sides. We also have rectangles, which are parallelograms with four right angles. And in the space in between, where we have both rectangles and parallel and rhombuses, we have squares. So squares are a rectangle, a rhombus, and a parallelogram. Rhombus is always a parallelogram. A rectangle is always a parallelogram. And that's it. If you're ready, you can go on and try example one, classification of quadrilaterals.